and it happens so fast. I mean, there's nothing that you can do. You can't react that fast to it. Angie Smith, back in the Freak Nation. Good to see your smile and face, Angie. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how are you feeling right now at this moment? Right now, in this moment, I feel great. Um, I just wish I was on the motorcycle racing right now. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. And the Freak Nation, they don't know this story, but I'll try and, again, make this as quick as possible. We were in St. Louis at Worldwide Technology Raceway expecting an appearance from Matt and Angie Smith. And I text Matt saying, hey, guys, can you make it a little bit later? And he says, sorry, man, I'm at the hospital. Angie had an accident. And that's what happened at Worldwide Technology Raceway. It's like, oh, my gosh. I will never forget that feeling. We're standing on the stage like, oh, yep. they'll be here. They'll be here. Get that text. And because we were in this area that was so closed off from the drag strip, which was really right behind us, mm -hmm. we had no idea what was going on. And that text, I just remember, I, I just got the chills again. Yeah. My heart just sank. I'm like, oh, crap. And how are we supposed to go on with the rest of our day anyway? So, yeah, that just... Like Kenny said, seeing your smile is incredible. Angie, can you run us through that run and what happened with, for you to wreck that bike at Worldwide, Worldwide, Worldwide Technology Raceway? Yes. So, um, you know, all things were going the same. It was just a normal day. Um, I was riding a bike um, that I typically don't ride. I wasn't riding my pink bike that I normally ride. Um, it was a bike that Chip Ellis had tested for us. And um to be quite honest, it had different brake, a different braking system on it. Um, and I'm not saying aggressive brakes aren't good. We need aggressive brakes. Um, and the brakes on that bike were a little bit more aggressive than my bike. And um, we put new pads on it on Friday. Well, Friday, I didn't make it down the track. So I really didn't have to use a lot of brakes. And then Saturday, um, I went through the lights at almost 200, 200 miles an hour, and there's a few bumps at the finish line, and I hit the bumps at the finish line, and as I hit the brakes, the front tire was in the air, and I stopped the front tire from rolling. So when, when, when that happens, and the front tire comes down, and I'm still on the brakes, and the front tire's not spinning, and the bike just washes out. And it happens so fast. I mean, there's nothing that you can do. You can't react that fast to it. You had some injuries because of it as well. Seeing you back and in a qualifying position in Las Vegas is incredible, but it took you a bit to get to where you are right now, several races later. What injuries were had and how have you been able to come around them huh, decently quickly? Right. So they transported me to St. Louis um, University Medical Center, which is a great uh, level one trauma center. Um they tested me from my hair to my toenails and everything in between. Um, I sustained eight broken toes. I had a little bit of road rash. Um, so Tony Stewart and Leah were so graciously, they flew me home, home on my private jet, on their private jet. And it was great because I was going to ride in the truck. Um, yeah. So I got flew home on a private jet, um, got to get home and start my healing. And then I went to my orthopedic doctors and my plastic and reconstructive surgery doctors that I have at home. And we, they, I had two casts on my, I had one cast and one, one leg was in a boot. So then what they did was they cut the cast off because they needed to see, you know, what was going on with my foot. Um, they said I had eight broken toes, but I also needed a skin graft on my arm and my toes. So they immediately sent me to plastics the next day. Then the doctor, Dr. Calder, he was great. Um, he said, he, I've heard so much about you, but I don't even know who you are. So um, he moved his schedule around and did surgery on me the next day. They didn't, um, they have to do an, a before surgery called, um, they have to do a preliminary surgery for the skin graft where they go in and they lay the stuff called Integra in your arm and it bonds with your dermal layer of your skin. So they did that and they have to let that set a week and then they have to do the skin grafts. I had my skin grafts 10, 11 days ago now. Everything is healing well. And um, I went back for my follow-up this past week on Tuesday and um, they cleared me to race. I mean, obviously I was like, look, I want to race and I'm not going to go fast. I had to promise them that I wasn't going to go 200 miles an hour. And um, they cleared me to race and um, I got clearance from all the NHRA doctors 
And um, I got to take the tree and go down the track at 90 miles an hour. And um, it was the best feeling in the world because I went out there and I did my burnout. And I so bad wanted to go down the track when John Hall, one of my really dear friends, is, was in the other lane beside me. And when he put it on the two-step, you'll see I, I flinched because I was like, oh, I'm late. Like I need to be on the two step. So <laughs> it's already in my brain that I need to be going down the track. So all is good. I'm healing well. And um, I can't wait. I'm already anticipating next season. You don't seem like there's any fear factor at all of getting back on the bike. Was there a tiny bit? And now that you've done that, even if it was just 90 miles an hour, it's gone and it makes you even more excited for next year. I, there was no fear of me getting back on the motorcycle. And I think a part of that is I knew, I know exactly what happened. I was, I never was unconscious. I know exactly. I can replay the whole crash from me breaking to me trying to keep the bike up to me falling off and flipping. I can replay the exact whole thing. Even when the paramedics come up to me, I can replay the whole thing. And I think the best thing about the whole thing is I know what happened. And I think that's the biggest thing that, um, that I don't have a fear of getting back on the bike. Angie Smith, what an incredible story, but I can't, I don't mean to make light of it by any stretch, but the dog in the background seems like, <laughs> what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out there racing. What do you, leave me alone. I'm, this is my nap time. <laughs> it's, right. It's, is the dog used to you not being in competition? No, she's not used to it at all. They live a way better life than we do. I'm telling you. <laughs> I get, we got, you, kept this would do. About, you kept talking about it, and I kept seeing that dog get further under the covers. Like, when she yeah. got up? <laughs> they have a really good life here. I mean, they get to go to all the states and all the races, and they hang out in the air condition. They have heat today because it's cold. I mean... They live the good life. I used to ride a motorcycle, and what you described was the major fear that I didn't fear buses, cars, nothing. What I feared was the front wheel locking up at speed and go flying over the front of the bike. That To sit there and talk about it and smile and know everything that's going on, you have my utmost respect. Well, thank you. I have I've had a lot of people come up to me and tell me I'm a badass and uh, they tell me I'm a tough girl. And I always say my family didn't name, they didn't raise anybody that was weak. And my father-in-law, my father-in-law always told me, if you're going to go drag racing, you better be strong. Oof. No, well, that's proven. There's no question of <laughs> anybody that questions that send them to us and all three of them will get them straightened out about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Angie, did you realize the strength of the NHRA and your brethren, your sisters and brothers of the NHRA when this happened? And I say that because of the uh, the love and support that came out for you specifically after this accident. It was overwhelming. And mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't sit. We would be on this podcast for 30 minutes if I had to go through everybody that I needed to think. I mean, it was amazing that a whole community of people from competitors to racers to people that I didn't even know that knew me, uh, from professionals to everybody, to, from sending flowers. I had more food and more flowers. Matt thought that it was going to be a funeral, that I was dead or something because we had so many flowers at my house. And uh, if I would have ate everything that they, everybody sent to me, I would probably be 300 pounds right now. So. But I mean, just the community, a whole group of people coming together like that. It's, it's amazing. All right. Last thing for you. Who yelled at who first? Once you got over the sympathy, did you yell at Matt first, your husband, or did Matt, your husband yell at you first? He's actually been pretty good. And he's actually hasn't yelled at me and I haven't yelled at him. He's been like wonderful, but I'm going to keep that low key so he doesn't hear me because he's in here. He's down there, but he's been wonderful. Like um, I have to wear like my, I call them my walking boots, but I have to wear like my air cast boots. And like at night when I get up, like, I have to put them on if I go use the bathroom or whatever. But um, he always says, are you okay? Do you need help? So he's been wonderful. So kudos to him and like my entire family, everybody has pitched in to help me from my team to my family back home to his family. Everybody's pitched in and everybody's been so wonderful. And, you know, I just, I can probably never repay all these people. So thank you. That's pretty much all I can say. 
The right. repayment is in your smile, in your spirit. Like you can you can hear it and feel it coming out of you real quick. So that that's yes. the repayment. Yes. And a freaking slap on the back of the head to Matt every now and then hurt, doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, I got these boots on. You see these boots? Let's see. Yeah. See these boots? <laughs> if, he, if he gets out of line, I got these boots. <laughs> wow. Oh, those boots are made for kicking Matt's ass. Uh-huh. That's right. My sister Amanda would probably say, okay, go for it. Yeah, oh, she would go for it for sure. <laughs> Well, Angie, again, you guys fly in those Lucas Oil colors and, of course, come to the Freak Nation many, many years. We thank you guys for uh, what you do and really what you've done over the last month, month and a half, man. It's uh, It's been awesome watching you recover and getting back on that bike. Thank you so much. And now, hold on real quick. So for a little bit of NHRA technicalities, because of that qualifying run, you're going to maintain your top 10 status for the year, right? Yeah, I think so. And I think we're going to try and do it at Pomona as well. We'll see how many bikes show up for Pomona. Yeah. But um so that, cool. that that actually helped me. And uh, most importantly is to maintain the top 10 and be able to walk across that stage on Monday night. Awesome. Yeah. See, that makes the story there even better. Is. Good deal. Angie, right. thank you for doing this. And it's awesome to see your smile. Thank you so much. Hey, moms, check this out. This is how we justify ice cream with the kids. You gotta put them to work. They gotta earn it. Stella, which Lucas Slick Mist product are you working with? I'm working with the tire and trim shine, which is amazing. Watch. Oh yeah, work it, girl. Henley on the inside, which Lucas Slick Mist product are you using? I'm using the interior detailer. Watch. Wow. Oh, so easy. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Now, don't tell them, but mom's got speed wax. Yep. That's the easiest one of them all, but they don't need to know that. Mom needs her ice cream too. So let's get to work. We got this. Yep. Lucas works. <laughs>